Hey guys, Robert and Ingrid here, and like we said in the last video, we're going to be doing a full retrospective a little bit after the fact. Give, give it a chance to get it all settled in and mm -hmm. let us um, digest them all. And is Mothra still your girl? Mothra is still my girl, in fact. What about Leo, though? Leo is also pretty great. Yep. Can't say he's your boy, but definitely your girl's son. You could say that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be doing an entire Masa retrospective. The four solo movies, as well as talk going back over all of her Godzilla appearances. I say we should do it in chronological order. What do you think? That would make the most sense, yeah. So, the very first one, as we you saw in our review, it has a lot of flaws. A lot mm -hmm. of unbuilt tropes that are actually a good thing those tropes were provided. Because, like, the natives, not needed. Mm -hmm. Um the 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 cosmos the fairies needed yeah. more characterization. Mothra mm -hmm. needed to be more than just a mindless monster. But it's a starting point. A starting it's, point that they would later build on to be much better. And set a high mark for vi human villains. Mhm. Mm Cuz good god that guy ended up being the worst, didn't he? Yeah, it's just like I was not expecting to be slapped up upside the head with a human villain that was that despicable. Exactly. The point where you're having the world going to hell, you have people are basically turning on the governments are no longer protecting him, and he still thinks he's gonna make a profit out of this. It's like what the fuck, dude? Yeah, how much I have a feeling that even there was he reached a point where it wasn't he kept it he was just deluding himself. Mm-hmm. It was like, because you know, there's no way. How can you make a profit when the whole world is against you? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, once he shot that cop, you knew it was all over. Indeed. Yeah, but but yeah, though. I mean, for a good first outing, I mean, it was it only it, besides um the original God. No, yeah, it was definitely one. You know, another case of Ashira Hondo, probably not his strongest, but definitely still well done. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, what we will later see in the high side era took a lot from this. Oh, indeed. All right. Well, next chronologically would be Godzilla versus Mothra. Would you basically say that Mothra fully realized? Mm-hmm. Or it's yeah. just like, all right, then. We have this. Now let's let's try this again. Let's refine on this. Exactly. And I think I think also having mixed with Godzilla made him have to drop the natives and all that. I have a feeling that was probably more, I have a feeling that was a bit more of necessity, but it was a good necessity. Yeah, it's just like separating the wheat from the chaff. All exactly. Right, then, there's this is the elements that worked about this. These were the elements that didn't. Yep. Now let's go forward with that. Exactly. Exactly. And well, once and once we um, you know, we go through the whole movie and it, but unfortunately, it set the standard that I know you hate. Yeah, where it's just like from then on, we basically get the same Mothra plot in pretty much every movie she's starring in. With one or two exceptions. But yeah, it's just like, like yep. Yeah, Mazra's there, then dies, and then her baby takes over. Mm-hmm. Yep, in this case, twin babies, but that's the only time we really see them. And, but, you didn't know that at first. Yeah, you know, so at first... I did, and it, indeed, and, did not know that at first. It's and just for, and it was later that I realized that, hey, <laughs> I get the themes of the cycle of death and re. Life, life, and rebirth, and everything, but you can at least put a You won't fault the first one, though. No. But you won't fault the first one, though, no, right? Yeah, I'm not going to fault the first one. Yeah. It's like, it's the equivalent of call. It's the equivalent of complaining about Seinfeld when you've seen a lot of un unfunny comedies take after its style. You can't exactly. fault the first one for the cheap knockoffs that came later. Exactly. And in this case, also, uh, also, um, I, let's be honest, most of those other one, the times when they would repeat her, it's when we're, they're just forcing, oh, not forcing, but they're having Mothra in and a done in one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but then after this, we would then get Godzilla versus the, no, no, I don't, I take back, we get Ghidorah, King of the, and the, the uh, Ghidorah, King, Ghidorah, the three had a monster, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then, we've seen so many of these that we're getting the titles mixed up. Yep, Ghidorah the Three Ended Monster, and that one was also very good. Probably one of the funner uses of the fairies, as opposed to we're, they're the fairies at this point, and mm -hmm. or the twins. I mean, come on, them translating Godzilla and Rodan. Oh, Godzilla! What terrible language! 
Oh yeah, that was brilliant. It's just and, like yeah. Yeah, I always like the trope where it's just like we, the audience, can't understand what they're saying that the characters in universe do, and they react to it, and so we just have to mentally fill in the blanks of what they said. And I see Godzilla cursing, don't you? It's like oh, hey, yes. fuck I can you. see Godzilla tossing out some f bombs out there. Yep. Oh, uh, and, but it's it's the one baby, and it stays a baby. That's the one down there with Showa. We only got th- two Godzilla outings with full Mothra. The rest were and were one Mothra. One of them was basically a token show. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But yeah, but yeah. So right here now, it's I'd say given how, what ended up happening during the final battle, it actually worked in its favor. Hmm. You know, with um, now that though, let's also be honest. You would have, like, if you had two flying monsters, it would have been hell with those old style effects. Yeah, that's just one of those cases of limitations of the technology of its time. Because have you ever noticed, they always usually have only one flyer during the early show up. Mm-hmm. Am I it's right about that? It's very hard to coordinate, too. Exactly. So I think that's why they kept it as, you know, was the worm. And but also you have that point when Godzilla and when Ghidorah attacks Mothra, and that's what gets Godzilla like, hey, hey, I don't think not that even been... I'm that much of an asshole. Yeah, and you know what? Screw it. When we add it, when we tag on this as a mini Ghidorah retrospective too, now that we've seen all forms of Ghidorah. Yeah. So don't we're tag on a little bit because well, we gotta talk about it here. This is no longer our our second favorite Ghidorah. Oh, yes, but, now we have a new second favorite. Godora. Which we'll get to, but this one was still good. This is our, despite being our third favorite, it said it's only because the other one's take with this one established. And did it better, but this was a very solid base to start from with this intergalactic apex asshole. Exactly, and the fact that, yeah, it's a planet conqueror. Mm-hmm. basically. And yeah, if you're willing to attack an infant like Mothra, yeah, and that, that's what gets Godzilla to be like, like you said, hey, I'm not that much of an asshole. It says a lot. And he he doesn't die though at the end. He does, if I remember right, he's just defeated, right? Or did he get a, did he leave? I forgot. I believe he was just defeated, if I recall correctly. Right, right. But, um, and of course, we were having Invasion of the Astro Monster. Um, if I recall right, no Mothra. Yeah, no Mothra. It was just Rodan. And in mm-hmm. that case, um, um, that, that one was the first time we had the mind control Ghidorah. Eh, which is a trope. It's just, eh. That unfortunately would plague him for the it, it plagues him for the rest of the show, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. It's but just this like, one wasn't that bad for the show. This was the best of the show was mind control Ghidorah. Yeah, mostly because it was the first time where it was still a relatively unique thing, and then it just kind of circled the drain later, let's be real. Yeah, but and, but he was still a bit of a good threat, though, so I think that's part of the reason why it doesn't bother people. Now, for next, Mothra's next appearance was Ebera the Sea Monster. Or uh... should I say the King now? Here's the other question. If this was originally a King Kong movie, do you think they still would have included Mothra? Because I'm not sure. I don't really think that Mothra would have a place in a King Kong movie. True, honestly. but you gotta remember though, that first movie was very King Kong like. Yeah, I mean, that's perfectly fair. It's just that. Hmm, oh, speaking of Kong, why don't you. too many cooks. Yeah, speaking of Kong, why don't you tell me about that little um, information you had shared with me? The other day. Yeah, I actually saw an interesting post on Tumblr where it was just like, hey, what if we are, what if maybe instead of interpreting it romantically, you would interpret it more like we would look, say, react to a cute small kitten or whatever? Yeah, I was like, ooh, I'm gonna, I, I want all the, I want to give her all the pets. Yes, and it's just like, hey! And, well, let's just say you would obviously be very mad if someone tried to take your pet away from you. And that would explain, at least in the very first movie, the, him playing around. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like, you know, poking at her and everything. Now, I would say the Peter Jackson one, no, that's love. Mm-hmm. But for the original 1930s, yeah, that could be a case of, like, my pet. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, but, but again, with Monster, though, it the only other time we get full-grown Monster, no explanation what, and when that happened. Oh, no. Did we see her change? I forget. No, she was just full-grown uh, for some reason, and she largely just felt shoehorned in, so it was kind of disappointing. 
Yep, and then that will be the last time we would see Full Grown Monster on the show. Uh, because mm -hmm. after this, we would then get Destroy All Monsters, where we get Worm Monster again, and mm -hmm. a decently mind-controlled Ghidorah. Mm -hmm. And it's still one of our favorites. Uh, but I yeah, say, Ghidorah though, but just kind of gets curb-stomped into oblivion. Oh, that beyond <laughs> into oblivion. Um... But um, but 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 even even well, you know, he does a good job when he's actually controlled. But once he loses control, psh, much like Titanosaurus, it don't matter if your mind controlled, you're dead meat. Mm-hmm. And for King Ghidorah, one more outing would have been during um with Gigan and what the hell, right? Yeah. What? What? Why did they have to bring him in? There is oh so unnecessary. It's just like and Megalon and Gigan and Megalon in the next film made more sense than this. Mm-hmm. It just felt like, you know, yeah, just there. And like I said, it was the worst show of one because those necks were so stiff they were barely moving. It was like a boom, and they just wobble around. Mm-hmm. It's like they slapped that together or something, or they didn't have enough of the budget, so they simply said, "Eh, just um, put the, put rods up their head, their necks." Hmm. But yeah, that would have been the last for Ghidorah. And well, Monster's last appearance was Destroy All Monsters. And mm -hmm. um, Ghidorah's was um, versus Gigan. <laughs> now, Ghidorah would get a spectacular reinterpretation during the High Sai era. And mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the better de redesigns, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, especially it doing one moment that we never saw again, until at least until... The third anime movie, which was mm. which was Ghidorah wrapping around Godzilla. Oh yeah. Strangle him. Of course. Why is that a bad idea? Come on, you remember why is that a bad idea? You don't get within melee range. You just don't. Not That's when just... he not when he has thermonuclear breath and can just devastate you in one attack and. You know, uh, and yeah, it was a um, Ghidorah, good fight, probably one of the better mind control version, and at least had a good explanation. It was created that way, and mm -hmm. it put up a good fight, and then we got Mecha King Ghidorah, which you loved, you loved. Oh, yes, that was just hot damn, that was a nice twist. I mean, put up a good fight, but not the greatest fight, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. But then after that, but then he's done in the water and he's done it now for the Godzilla portion of the high side era. And then we got, of course, then Godzilla Mothra Battle for Earth, which I found out was the highest, one of the highest grossing Godzilla movies. That's weird. I mean, it's uh, not that, like it's a bad movie, but it's just like. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking him up right now. Um, but yeah, tell, tell me what you thought about it. Mm. You know, you know, Godzilla and Mothra. For one, one of the better Cosmos. Originally our favorite, but not no more. Not no more, yeah. Let's just say we'll get to how they're t handled in the Rebirth trilogy. But yeah, it was just like, hey, I'll take actually seeing a actual Moth Mothra. Yeah, exactly. Get it because that's actually rarer than you'd think. It's just like, it's the iconic design. It's just like, what? You don't actually see it all that much. Exactly, exactly. But also, we got to be on, and but I guess that now, now do you more, now that you saw once we got the rebirth, my issue was this version of Mothra. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, it's like, it's not, I'm not, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it was too poofy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was way too poofy. Like, of... We had some like more previously ugly looking ones. This is definitely more on the cute side of things, but yeah. But even but even then though, it wasn't bad. It was not mm -hmm. bad. It just and again, like I said before, I can accept the body of it being the way it is. It's the wings having the poofiness as well that bother me. Mm -hmm. And That's fair. yeah. But then, um, um, oh, I think I'm still looking, I'm trying to, while we're talking, I'm still trying to look up the, um, the box office for each of the movies, but, um, hold on. 
Oh, gee, no, not the American re-releases. Uh, I hate that when they just focus on that. But, um, but yeah, but yeah, oh, don't forget also your other favorite, Batra. Oh, yeah. We brought, yeah. we brought, we the, the dark moth up rock. the formula by adding in. The, yeah, the dark moth Well, rock. another moth. Not necessarily bad guy, just the edgy anti-hero Mothra. Exactly. The anti-hero Mothra. And of course, just like the others, Mothra keeps on thinking, um, um, you know, we keep, you know, even Mothra thinks, oh, bad guy. Then find mm -hmm. out, oh, no, not bad guy. Mm-hmm. But, And of course, yeah. the high Saimu era Mothra is one of the best because the Mothra doesn't actually die. Uh, Imagine that. Yep, and we do know she's clearly survived dealing with the asteroid because how else were they sending those messages later on, right? Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, the less said about their appearance in Space Godzilla, the better. That was... Uh, what the yeah. hell, right? But, um... Uh, yeah, um, must, oh, oh, okay, um, turns out Monster vs. Godzilla, is the original one, if with inflation, Monster vs. Godzilla, the original 1964, is still the highest rated, uh, highest box office. Huh. Three, and 295 million, and 295 Six hundred thirty-eight, two hundred ninety-five million, six hundred thirty-eight thousand, four hundred ninety-two, and it is tied with the original King Kong versus Godzilla. No, wait. Okay, something's wrong here. Yeah. No, oh no, no, no. The worldwide. Oh God, the worldwide does not make any sense. Oh, okay, dear. let me. Okay, okay. If you go purely by Japan numbers, it is actually the third highest. Next, but next to, uh, and that's the original one. Next to Shin Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroyer. But the 90s Godzilla vs. Mothra is the second highest of the high side. Oh, huh. Wouldn't have yep. guessed that. Yep. So, yeah, wow. But like I said, though, with the Cosmos, they actually had, they, we were starting to get on the right track of getting personalities and everything. Uh huh. Which is but they were still the twin speak. Later on. But they were still the twin speak. Yeah, which is just kind of well. Now that we have something better to compare to, just kind of feels. Yeah, it belongs to Mothra. It's like okay, stop with the hive mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the only time they ever talk separately is when they were still finishing each other's sentences. Mm-hmm. Which I get it. They're falling off of the original. I get it, but it's still annoying. Mm-hmm. It's just like they feel like they're just one character. Like you could just have one of the fair the cosmos, and that'd be good. Uh huh. But we did get not only the Mahara and Masura, yeah. We did not just that one, but we also got um Mahara Masura, which is one of my other favorites. But we never hear outside of this movie. Yeah. But I do feel that again the con and also we had a not as badass as her first outing, but still a monster that was badass going against the military in her worm form. Except in the yeah. first original movie, she would tank everything. Here, not so much. Mm-hmm. And also having two flyers against Godzilla was one of the better fights of the high side. Oh yeah, you can tell that there's definitely. They got better at those effects over time, and it shows. Yep, although the only other downside is this was less a Godzilla movie and more of a Mothra movie that just happened to have Godzilla as the baddie. Uh-huh. Would you at least agree with that's that? That's personally a problem for me, but I see what you're talking about. Yeah, well, and, uh, but yeah, and um, and of course for the dub, way too much green Aesop. Aesop. Mm. To be fair, we kept on hearing that they were going to be doing that in the um, rebirth, but not as much as we thought. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, th and then we get into the rebirth series. And the rebirth trilogy was what we went over, and this redefines a lot. Mm -hmm. For one, the Cosmos, are, or whatever they were calling them. So we're just in Cosmos for convenience sake. They They're are just sisters. actual characters with names and distinct personalities, and they throw in a new twist with this one. They have an evil, or I suppose more of an edgy third sister. 
Yep, who is, at least in the first two, very Rita Repulsa-like. Hmm. And, and we, did, we do get a regular Mothra. Whether or not this ties into the original, I doubt it. I look at his own self-contained universe. Me too. Because otherwise, how would, how would you explain the cosmos being different, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, we get some nice stuff. I like how there's no case of, oh, parents are useless. Thank God we didn't have that. Yeah, in this case, the whole family has to work together to bring this down. But if there's one downside, this is the one that has one good kid and one annoying kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Indeed. And yeah, it just, because you have the older brother. He's good. He, you know, trying to get stuff done. But the sister... Annoying, and I just a brat. And I knew that she, we knew that she was the very beginning when we see her crying, but then we see her give a smile and we're like, she's faking it. Yeah, it's just like, come on. And then what was the point of giving her the medallions? Like, you must protect it. What made you think she was going to protect it? The brother's been doing most of the work. Yeah, seriously. And what happened? Oh, it got taken. But then, but this gets part. We while we do have Masra die. It, you admit, this was the best handling. Oh, yeah. This one felt like it gave that death the proper dramatic weight. Whereas it, for pretty much every other plot after the Besides, game, it is, one, I, mother's yeah. death is kind of mostly <clears throat> a given. So they kind of forget to actually put the weight in it. Whereas here, man, they really... They really go home and sell it in this one. It's definitely the best mother's death. Especially when her baby comes that. hatches prematurely to help her. Yes, which is also something that's brand, something that was a brand new twist. And having it be a son, but that's only if you know it. Unfortunately, the dove keeps saying she. Mm-hmm. No, which it's threw me off a little bit. It's Mothra Leo, which mean, mm -hmm. which means it's a boy. But yeah, but this monster in our head canon, it's the daughter, it's the son of Mothra and Batra, because there's a lot of Batra in him. Mm-hmm. And. As much as we liked how Mothra looked, Mothra Leo had the best look. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to deny that. It was both cute, but also I'm going to kick your ass. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you got to... combination. Adorableness and kick-assery. Yep. And some people like to say this was a case where it did, he didn't earn his upgrade. I think he did out of necessity, but it still made sense. Yeah, it's it wasn't like, like he tried him. to fight even though he was basically just born and had no chance of winning. So the will to fight was clearly there. It was yep. just a matter of giving him the means. Which is why and they absorbed the It was a pretty damn awesome power up sequence, let's be real. Yep. Oh, and Deskadora. Deskadora, indeed. Yep. What did you think of Deskadora? Huh. I mean, obviously, it's not exactly Ghidorah. For one, it's on four feet, it has four feet. And two wings. It is sort of interesting to think that there might be other, like, lesser Ghidorah-like species and creatures that are out there. Which we'll get into in our next video, which will be a bonus video. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I do agree. And once it went out, it went out pretty good. And, yeah, by the end of the movie, everything was nice and resolved, and it was a good ending. Mm -hmm. Then we got the second one. I want to cry. Ingrid? Oh, you froze a second. Yeah, I saw that. I said, I said, then we got the second one. Which basically kept on circling the drain the entire runtime. It was one I, of those points where it's just like, well, I've officially turned out of this movie. Time to open up my computer and go fishing and get... You did that right back. away! You did it. that right... You did that right away! Where it's just like... It's just like, oh no, you're gonna give me the green ASOP. I'm going well, to thankfully, go thankfully they didn't. Thankfully, thankfully it wasn't as bad as we thought with the ASOP at least. Yeah, you got at least that's the one advantage thing we will give it, but everything else bad kids. Bad kids, not the worst kids. But still bad and just a plot that stopped kept. Useless human bad guys. Thing. Useless human bad guys. Balvira barely does anything. Yeah. This generic looking um, villain that had nothing to contribute, no personality or any type of viciousness. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was bad about it was the starfish spawn it had. Yeah, that was pretty creepy, but then, yeah, it kind of squandered that later on. It's just. And then, and then you had Mothra get a very unearned um, upgrade. 
Uh-huh. And a not too terribly well designed upgrade either at that. I know it was Aqua uh, with with yeah with Aqua uh, Mothra. Mhm. All right. But um, but yeah, it we good God Almighty, we wanted to bang our heads against the oh, the table, right? Mhm. Mm it's just like we thought we were going to be generous and at least give it like a three or a four. A four. For like... And we were for like the good three quarters of the movie. And then the ending just t it, took it the made... whole thing into hell. It's just yeah, like, and... okay. <sighs> it's like at first, I know I did this joke before, but well, do it again. Just like, okay, maybe fire the script people, but the SFX <laughs> people are pretty good. And then it's just like, you know what? Screw it. Fire everybody. By the, yeah, end, by of the end of it all, fire everybody. <laughs> uh, good God almighty. That was so bad. But we made up with it with one of the best. Oh, yes. Let's just say that third movie more than redeemed it in my eyes. Way more than redeemed. Now, I'm glad you all say that the second one, we could see why this, it gave the whole trilogy a bad name. But... The third one, this is what Gamera 3 should have been. This is indeed what Gamera 3 in the High Sci era should have been. And the funny thing is, it's easy to compare the two trilogies, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. And they both are very similar. You both have first and third movies that are um, equal and that are and that both connect each other more. You have a second one that's more on its own, although Gamera tied in a little bit into the third one at least. And its and, second movie was far better executed, let's be real. Oh, yeah, but not the third one. Mm-hmm. The third one, well, well, not as bad, nowhere near as bad as two. It was it's, just not necessarily the best place to end it on. Here, that problem does not exist. This is a great thing to go out Yep, on. especially with the fair, and the, the cosmos. Oh, yes, the plot with the cosmos is absolutely fantastic in this one because it takes the dynamic that we originally started with and flips it on its head. To and fleshes it out. The plot. And fleshes it out. We get the best kids, some of the best kids we've seen, period. And not just the leading kids, but the background kids, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, the fact is, what's what the first thing they do when they arrive? Where, uh, oh, and one, one of the best, our second favorite, King Ghidorah. Hands oh. down. Oh, yeah. This like is the one. Said before, this is the one that eventually lead to the number one King of the Monsters. It's this yes. one in particular. This one in particular, which you wouldn't expect. Yeah, you that's not, not something I would have guessed. But when you look at the healing factor, the seditiousness, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And still it being, a, you, know, you know, like how much, you know, like just it, it being a conqueror and everything, and actually seeing that. And this is what we need. The stakes, and all the stakes were high. You have one of the cosmos, uh, Laura, getting you know, converted to evil. Why? Because she represents love, but unfortunately love is easy to manipulate. Mm-hmm. And that was the other thing. You have wisdom, love, and courage. The two, and the first two are, let's be honest, they're pure. You either have to manipulate them or corrupt, uh, corrupt them and make them evil, but they won't naturally do that way. Courage, on the other hand, while well, you, you normally... Well, you can be courageous in doing some very awful things. So that sort of explains why, eh, the third sister is, well, a little bit more iffy compared to the other two. Yeah, but they, let's be honest, though, at the, at the same time, we were initially banging our heads like, why did you let her live? And then when we get to the second one, we're like, thank you for acknowledging it. That's one of the few good things about the second one. They at least acknowledge we need to do something about, we might have to, you know, put an end to Belvira if she keeps this up, which we're like, thank you. Why were you idiots the first time around? But now that we see it here, we're like, okay, we get it. There's a certain balance here. And it's kind of funny because like, it's very easy to, sort of compare this to the Triforce, since it's sort of a similar... Yeah, you were, yeah that was so funny. When we were watching it, they were saying courage, wisdom, and you said power, like, and it's like love. Oh. Oh, okay. Yep. Same kind of concept, though. Yep, and it was so obvious that the more mature and wise, the wise sister would be the one who would be taken off the board for most of the movie. Oh, yeah. And that was tragic. We were like, what the heck happened? Because first we just thought she was tired. Because it, it, that scene had no indication she was dying, did it? No, it didn't. So it just sort of like hits you with a gut punch, but not in a bad way. Yep. 
if there was any one downside, you that the stakes were ra- were now raised. Yep, and Mothra comes in a bit earlier than the other two movies and puts up a valiant effort, but then they soon realize I got to go back in time. Mm-hmm. The only way to stop King Ghidorah is to go back in time to when it was still strong, but at a, but a much weaker state. Mm-hmm. And that's what it does. And I love the cheesy effects on the dinosaurs, didn't you? Did it feel both stupid yet appropriate? Yeah, sometimes you can just appreciate a bit of cheese. And the fact they had CGI brontosaurus or brachiosaurus, it's like, you knew this was right, right, and not the Jurassic Park. Mm hmm. Um. I love it. You have a T-Rex attacking Triceratops, and then Ghidorah is attacking the T-Rex. Like, you know, Ghidorah, uh, the T-Rex has the um, Triceratops in its jaw, but then the whole T-Rex fits in one of Ghidorah's jaws. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you're just like, wait, this is when it's younger, and it's still an ass kicker. Mm-hmm. And Mazra puts up a valiant fight and does defeat him, but didn't realize it left one of its tail, uh, Ghidorah's tails behind. Mm-hmm. And then... And now, the, while the second movie, he did not earn it, you know, his stuff. And people might argue the first movie, he didn't earn his power-up. He earned it here. Yeah, there is no question. Because basically, he made that sacrifice to go back in time, knowing there was no way coming back without Laura to help. And so, and in fact, he was ready to just die there. Mm-hmm. Because he was badly hurt. But you have three ancient Mothra, you know, worm Mothras show up and cocoon him. Mm-hmm. Which also explains how he's able to be hidden until he's needed. Mm-hmm. And this, and, and much like Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, we get time travel with Ghidorah. But this mm-hmm. one actually felt a bit more better explained. For yeah, one, it really Ghidorah, did. It's just kind of weird that we saw the same thing happen twice. But this time that we have Ghidorah does disappear when he's killed, but we just have someone acknowledging, shouldn't we have forgotten? And then it's just like, then it appears, and it's just like, oh. It's even bigger, it's even bigger. Yeah, it's just like, oh, did you really think that was going to stop me? Here, screw you, I'm going to come back stronger from your stupid little plan. Yep, and then, um, but then, Mothra comes back stronger in, in um, with armor, Mothra. And well, once you get a guy that's been taking a nap for several million years, he's not going to wake up looking the same. Exactly, and he kicks in one of the most satisfying fights. I think in, it was one of the best kaiju fights, I think, in all of Toho. Yeah, wow, that was really something. It was short, but it was great. Just flying around and slicing off Ghidorah's wing, and Ghidorah's still flying, at least. And then he just plows right through him. Oh, and then yeah. you have a brief moment, though, where Ghidorah turns and looks at him, and Mothra looks back at him. It's like, yeah, I and got you, bitch. Much- yeah, so the then... Boom! And then he sheds the armor, revealing a glorious, eternal Mothra. Yes. And that feels like... It, he, he reached godhood, basically. More or less. It's, he's, he's the Moss God. <laughs> and But yeah, this there's a reason why we love this movie. It's one of the best. Now, Belvira does not change back to good. I think it's they're more just realizing that the sisters it. Sisters reach more of an understanding with her. It's like, okay, you've got your place, even though you're still kind of an asshole. And the fact that Belvera did not even try to control Ghidorah, King Ghidorah, she's like, she He's knew. Like, okay, this is a fish too big for me to fry. It's I like, can, I can control stupid. Death Ghidorah, but not this King Ghidorah. It's just like, yep, I'm not a moron. Yep. But yeah, and then after this, it would take a while before we had Mothra return during Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack. And that, that wasn't was a, a mouthful. <laughs> GMK, just stick to GMK. Yeah, but GMK. That was still that was still a good movie, but it was. not. And for having to have Mothra and King Ghidorah both people be good guys, or King Ghidorah especially being a good guy, and yes, it's a case where Mothra once again. Hatches, worm, moss, dies, powers up, uh, and gives the power up to um, King Ghidorah. Mm-hmm. It's now, still did... interesting to see them ordinarily enemies on the same side. So well, because Godzilla that. is evil, flat out evil. Mm-hmm. And but and like I say, I do love the idea that in this version, Ghidorah was actually supposed to be an Orochi waking up way too early. Mm-hmm. Hence why it had three instead of eight. Heads. Yeah, and 
I also did not, I, and while I understand why they still got so curb stomp, it wasn't really right seeing both of them get obliterated. Yeah, that's just, that's a little unfair. It was, but it was still good, and at least that it gave the humans a chance to win in the end. Mm -hmm. But then, um, then we would have, um, Mothra show up again during, um, Godzilla, uh, um, Tokyo SOS. Mm -hmm. And that was just underwhelming, wasn't it? It's just like I barely remember that. It was a rehash. It was a re it was a rehash. Yeah, it's just like I've seen this before. If you're gonna give me Mothra again, at least twist up the formula a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately you had met basically it was Mothra, but then you threw in Mecha Godzilla with it. Even though it was supposed to be a follow up on Mecha Godzilla. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then um um um, but yeah, and then after that, we have, uh, Final Wars. Mm-hmm. Wait, was Monster in Final Wars? Um, hold on a second. I just want, yep, Monster was in Final Wars and did a decent job. Not the best job, but when you have that many monsters. Yeah, it's easy to have some stuff get lost. Yep, and it did seem like they never. If for, this is the case where I don't know if, God, if Monster actually died taking down Ghidorah and Gigan or not. Uh huh. It's a little bit more ambiguous. Yeah, but then you had uh, Monster X or Kaiser Ghidorah, and not the worst, but uh, it felt mm -hmm. weird. It was like the only other time we've seen Ghidorah was four um was four feet. Yeah. It formed more like a centaur Ghidorah, didn't it? Yeah, which is just, that's just kind of awkward. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense for that to be the final boss. That makes sense, but that's also the problem. It's the final boss. It doesn't really it feel like he was the overarching villain, which Ghidorah usually is when there are areas involved. Yep, so that was fine. And then we finally got our favorite of both versions of the characters, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, I take it back. I want to say this is our favorite Mothra, because unfortunately it's the same thing again. Yeah. But definitely King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah, hands down. Best King Ghidorah. Mm-hmm. Because he was like the devil. Oh, yeah. I even, like, commented when he first saw the merger. It's just like, that looks like Satan coming out of the pits of hell. With all the fire and everything. And, yeah, you had Kevin, of course. You know, had everyone loves Kevin, but... It was just so, you know, like, he was so evil and gleefully evil. The fact that he took control of everyone and was able to make it storm and everything. You're just like, this felt like an alien invader coming, and we don't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. Just the amount of power he had at his, at his disposal. Oh, you know, indeed. Yeah. Now, Mazra in here was all right, and it did feel, I did like at least, the thing about this Mazra, it's best only if you take into account all the stuff implied about it, but we didn't actually see. Like, she's the queen of the monsters. She and Godzilla have a symbiotic relationship. Maybe something more, for all we know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And having her fight Rodan was actually... This is the first time we've had the two fight each other, and I actually like that. Oh, yeah. And, and actually having Mothra use our, her stinger on Rodan. Mm -hmm. But Mothra died again. Like she typically does. Sigh. Mm -hmm. But at least this one did give God and save Godzilla's life, though. You got to at least give it that. Oh, yeah. Because remember, he was ready to melt down. Mm hmm. And yeah, and then Ghidorah went down spectacularly. And that wasn't the end of Ghidorah, though. Mm hmm. Because what happened in the next movie? They end up turning him into Mecha Godzilla. They put Kevin's brain into Mecha Godzilla. And who knew Kevin had it in him to be vicious? Hmm. I guess he just looks silly next to the other two heads, but when he's on his own, it reminds him, oh, yep, this is Ghidorah, and he's still, still pretty yeah. bad. Even oh, and, un unless you want to believe the notion that the dominant personality of the the leader head took over. Hmm. Which I don't want to think that, because I want to say it's still Kevin. But yeah, yeah. Then, then he's taken out once and for all, so... Yeah, that's our, um, well, Mothra never shows up in the anime, you know, the anime movies, I mean. I'm still on the in the process of watching Godzilla Singular Point slowly with my usual DM, 
Mm-hmm. Um, we're still watching them several episodes at a time, and I haven't reached a point where Mothra shows up, but she is in the opening, so hopefully we'll get to her eventually. I've been yep. impressed with what I've seen in the anime so far. Maybe we'll cover that in another video. Yep. I um, mean, yeah, Mothra is supposed to be in it, but why don't we give people a tease? Tell them what you thought about the at least the first of the anime movie trilogy. Oh dear lord, it's like you're a pretentious up the a Godzilla ass. movie and you think that making something overly edgy and edgy, dark and depressing is the way to be meaningful. And it's just like, no, you've just made a movie that makes me depressed to watch and doesn't even feel like a Godzilla movie. It just feels like some kind of feels like some kind of overly edgy kids trying to make a statement and then they just slapped Godzilla onto it. <sighs> no kidding. No kidding. It just felt like, what were you even thinking? What were you doing? Mm-hmm. And, and it was done by Polygon Pictures, the guys who have done stuff like um, um, Transformers Prime and um, Tron Uprising. So they had good pedigree and the animation was fine. The animation was fine. It's just the writing dragged it all down to hell. Oh, yeah, the writing. Yeah. And it's, oh, I just looked it up. The guy who did the writing, he's the guy who did the Psychopath series. Oh, Lord Almighty. Oh, oh, oh boy. And also the Puella Magica Madoka Magica. Mm. Well, you know, I like- you know, You know about Madoka Magica, right? I have seen the first season. I keep meaning to watch the other stuff related what to season? it. And what season? What season? That's, and it's um, it's a one series thing. Oh, I mean like the 13 episode anime. I've seen that. I've just not gotten around to seeing the movie. The movie, the movie yeah, the movie. But you know where that went. So are you surprised seeing this now that you know that? No, I'm really not. I, it's sort of a case where, you know what, I think I would have preferred it in some ways to leave it where the anime left it. Here it's just like, look, I have written some edgy stuff in my times. I enjoy tormenting my OCs, but I don't do it forever. I at least give them some kind of a happy end- ending. Yep, stop deconstructing everything to bleakness. It's just like, no, the world's depressing enough already. I don't need more. I don't need help with that. Wait, it's going to get worse for the next two, I'm afraid to say. (sighs) So basically what you're telling me is is get ready to do the Mystery Science Theater on it. The next time usual, Em and I actually get the motivation to watch them, which I don't expect is going to be anytime remotely soon. I understand that, but if you want, you and I could do it if you want. Ah. Or I could just spoil everything for you and you don't have to watch it and then we'll talk about it. We can decide that one later. But yeah, but so, but yeah, to sum up with Mothra and, Gador- and King Ghidorah, it was Mothra. So what would you say was Mothra? Like, Rebirth is its peak. Would you agree with that? Oh, yes, definitely. And, and Mothra earns being the queen, wouldn't you say? Oh, she definitely does. I've just enjoyed her throughout this whole thing. It's just... She's the good queen, but she's not a nice queen. And she's definitely one that, well, she's got a mind for, like, everyone, not just herself. She's like Wonder Woman. Yeah. She's definitely the Wonder Woman of the monsters. And let's be honest, Ghidorah, he's the devil. He is the devil of the monsters. He is the, if Godzilla was God, then King Ghidorah is Satan. Hmm. And I guess I guess I'll make Rodan the court gesture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we have no love for Rodan. We, he's all right, but I th- we think he's over hype. He's over hype, especially when Angerus is right there. He's, he's right better there. than that. What is wrong with why do that people not like Angerus? Fortunately, Singular Point does him a bit more justice. Oh I yeah, say yeah, that much. Oh yeah. So, yeah, that's what we thought, and that's our retrospective. And we just love both of these characters, but especially Mothra. Mothra, her girl, and I love her too. Mm -hmm. So, next on our bonus video, we're going to go back again to talk about some of our, you know, spitballing some of our ideas for how we would continue the Monsterverse. We'll Mm -hmm. see you guys there.